This is Detective Recapped. Today, I'm going to explain a mystery thriller film called Marrowbone. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. A young man named Jack fondly reads through a handcrafted storybook, telling the story of how they've gone through many hardships before finally finding a place where they can be safe, at the other end of the ocean. It all began with Rose, taking her four English children to her decrepit, eerie, and abandoned childhood home. They're all on edge, and Rose herself looks distraught but she puts on a brave face for her children. Forcing a smile, she tells them that they're no longer Fairbairns. They'll be using her maiden name, Marrowbone, from now on. Rose then makes a line on the floor with dust, saying that once they cross it, they'll forget about their past. Her youngest son, Sam, asks if he will find them, but Rose pretends to not know who he's talking about, since she's already crossed the line. Despite her children's uncertainty, they cross it one by one, starting with Sam, Jane, Billy, then the eldest, Jack. True to Rose's wishes, the Marabones make beautiful memories in their new home, undisturbed by the shadows of their past. Nobody knows them there, and for the first time, they felt free. One day, the children meet a lovely girl named Allie. They become fast friends, and Allie takes a photo of the siblings. But their illusion of blissful, trouble-free life would soon break as the trip to America had taken the last of Rose's strength. Breathless, the frail woman reminds Jack that they must stay hidden until he turns 21, else they'll take his siblings away from him. She then directs him to the cupboard, and Jack's face contorts in anger as he retrieves a box from there. You lied in court, he says. You kept his money all this time. The children are devastated over their mother's death, but Jack makes his siblings take an oath over Rose's dead body on the bed. They repeat after him that nothing and no one will ever separate them. One day, Jane is startled by a gunshot, and when she goes to check on their cracked window, she sees a man in the distance. Terrified, she shrieks Jack's name. Six months have passed, and the siblings have kept their promise of staying hidden until Jack turns 21, even though Billy's sick of being holed up in the house. Sam insists that there's a noise coming from the mirror upstairs and that its cover is coming off. But Jane promises that the ghost has been gone for months. Sam believes that there's a ghost in their house who lives in the mirrors, so all the mirrors are kept covered at all times. Jack stares into nothing as his siblings talk, and he now has a scar on his forehead. Later on, Jack is covering the mirror up again when he notices the wet spot on the ceiling leading up to the attic. But just as he's ascending to the stairs to check it out, his scar starts aching badly, making him stop in agonizing pain. Jack goes to town to replenish their necessities, and he lies about his mother still being alive. After getting everything he needs, he heads over to the library where Allie is, and the two of them share an impassioned kiss. Though he feels strongly for her, Jack also lies to Allie about his mother being sick, and he keeps her from visiting them in their house. Suddenly, a man comes in, so Jack quickly slips past the myriad of bookshelves while Tom Porter hotly approaches Allie to charm her socks off, or at least try to. In his jealousy, Jack makes a ruckus as he sits down to direct Tom's attention to him. Tom is the town lawyer, and he reminds Jack that he'll be coming by their house tomorrow to collect $200 for the transfer charges on the estate. At home, Jack, Jane, and Billy are worrying about the payment since they only have $50 left. They have no choice but to seek out the money box. Much to Jane's dismay since Jack promised that they'll never touch it again. The box is hidden deep within a secluded cavern in the beach. Billy immediately takes it, and at home, he and Jack go through the box's contents until they find the wads of bills there. The boys are all happy and relieved, but Jane doesn't share their enthusiasm. She solemnly reminds everyone that it's blood money. They all know where the money came from. Come next day, Jack manages to trick Tom into accepting the signed papers, which were actually signed by a very nervous Jane. He pretends that his mother's too sick and ashamed to show herself in her state, so Tom doesn't insist on seeing her. Finally, Rose Marabone officially owns the estate, and Tom mentions that he's glad they wrapped this up before someone discovered the business with Jack's father. In turn, Jack thanks him for his discretion. That night, the siblings have a rowdy board game session, and they're clearly having fun, especially after their little victory earlier. But when Sam's made to fetch the dice that Billy threw, he finds himself in the floor with a covered mirror. Suddenly, the sheet covering the mirror falls, while Jack, Jane, and Billy start hearing creaking and thudding from the attic. Sam's shriek reaches them, and the boy wails that the ghost is back. Perturbed, Jack leads his siblings to the fortress, which is their makeshift bunker hoisted by pillows, blankets, and sticks. There, the children can try to feel safe while a Beach Boy record plays. Even Jane and Billy have receded into the scared children that they are, while Sam urges Jack to cover the mirror before the ghost gets out. 
The creaking, thumping, knocking, and rattling continue as Jack covers the mirror, while a crying Jane stares up at the ceiling, whispering, he'll never leave us, not even dead. Jack then eyes the wet spot on the ceiling, and hearing the dripping sounds, he peers through the torn part of the ceiling above him. As he's examining it, an animal squeals, rattling him. The pain in his scars starts searing, and like a dead weight, Jack falls to the ground. As soon as Jack comes to again, Jane firmly says that his ghost is back because they used the money. She tells Jack to return the money as soon as the sun comes up and let the ghost take it with him to hell. The next morning, Billy removes the wood covering the chimney so he can throw the money box into it. Seeing that Sam's sad and lonely from being hidden away in the house, Jack takes him to sit on their window, and from there, Jack starts flashing his light in Morse code towards Allie's farm. Soon enough, Allie excitedly responds to them, and Sam is delighted to learn that they've been communicating that way. As for Billy, he laments that he has to get out of that house. Jack and Allie are lying in the fields one day when she suddenly asks about his father. Though talking about the man is akin to plucking grass shards out of his throat, Jack still tells Allie about him, about how the things he did were unspeakable, how he's the reason they fled England to go to America. But he's dead now, so he can't hurt him and his siblings anymore. Allie gently cups his face and kisses his scar. As they walk along the beach, Tom is watching them from a distance. When Jack gets home, Billy isn't the slightest bit pleased. He confronts his older brother about how he's breaking his own rule by leaving the house even when it isn't necessary just to see Allie. Jane and Sam are fine with Jack seeing Allie though, and they even think that the house would be happier with her in it. But Billy is vehemently against the notion. At that point, he and Jack are growing more and more agitated with each other, and with a strained voice, Jack asks him why can't he live with the girl he loves. Billy fumes, asking if he's forgotten about his promise and if that doesn't mean a thing to him anymore. Jack starts trembling as Billy undermines him and everything he's doing for them, and their altercation ends with Jack yelling at him to get out and slamming his bedroom door on him. Later on, Sam steals the keys and uses it to unlock Rose's bedroom. The poor child sniffs his mother's clothes, takes out her record player, plays her lullaby, then goes through her belongings. He sees their family photo, then a newspaper clippings that reads, The Beast of Bampton, Captured at Last. On the clipping, the Beast of Bampton's face is covered with a coat, and Sam points to the covered man, calling him the ghost. Then Sam decides to examine the window that was shot at. He stands on a stool and touches the small hole, but he ends up falling on the ground, causing the closet door to open. The sheet covering the mirror falls, filling the boy with panic as he frantically grabs the sheet to cover himself with it. He yells for Jack, but soon he sees his own reflection in the mirror with the sheet over him. The more he stares, the taller the figure in the reflection gets. Voiceless shrieks starts filling the air as the sheet suddenly unravels. Jack later wakes up from a nightmare, and he heads downstairs to find Billy and Jane there with somber expressions. Jane tonelessly reports that Sam has been to their mother's room and that he saw the ghost in the mirror. Disbelieving, Jack says that that was just a lie they told him so he won't find out the truth, and Jane bitterly retorts that the truth is they walled up their own father and let him die and rot over their heads. Since it's Tom's last day at work before he transfers to New York, he invites Allie to his office. He offers her train tickets so she can come with him, but she politely turns him down. Defeated and frustrated, Tom surmises that this is because of Jack, so he gives her a case file, asserting that he's just trying to protect her and get her out of that place where she doesn't belong. He slams the door shut as he leaves, and a resigned Allie goes to look at the file. There she finds several newspaper clippings detailing the brutal theft and murders committed by Jack's father, and about how he even testified against him in court. It is also revealed that he had abused his own daughter, and the very last clipping shows that the man has escaped prison while the whereabouts of his family remains unknown. At home, Jane's sticking her hand into the ceiling so she can stroke their pet raccoon, Scoundrel. But while she's patting it, a gaunt hand suddenly grabs her own. Terrified, she withdraws it, and she watches Scoundrel try to leave the ceiling, only to get pulled back in. It keeps squeaking and squeaking until a snap is heard, followed by complete silence. While Ted's inspecting Rose's signature, he gets a call from the firm that offered him his New York position. The higher-up informs him that they don't need an employee anymore. They need a partner. So unless he can buy 10% of the firm's shares for $5,000, they'll be moving on to the next candidate. This leaves Ted equal parts devastated and furious, but after flinging his things across the room, he spots a newspaper clipping implying that the Fairbairns took the 10,000 pounds that's missing from the investigation. Jack's world comes crumbling down. When Ted confronts him for forging his mother's signature, he refuses to listen to Jack's pleas and instead demands that he give him the 10,000 pounds he's hiding as compensation so he can get out of that dump of a town. Though Jack had given up since the money's in the attic now, Billy climbs 
climbs down the chimney that night to retrieve it. He lands in the dirty, unkept attic where he finds Scoundrel dead and brutalized. The stench repulses him, but Billy keeps looking around until he finds the money box. Relieved, he goes to climb up the chimney again, only to stop upon hearing pants and labored breaths. When Billy looks back, he sees a ghoulish man in the darkness, spurring him to climb up as quickly as he can. But the soiled arms suddenly grab the rope he's climbing, tugging on it and making Billy fall head first. The rope's now wrapped around his neck and body, and with the arms still tugging, Billy's starting to choke. The money box soon falls back to the attic while he's frantically trying to cut the rope with his knife. Finally, Billy manages to free himself while the arms take the money box away. Jack wakes up in the floor of his room, and his stomach's in a lot of pain. He staggers to the bathroom, where Billy's screaming because of his heavily wounded stomach. Distraught, Jack yells that he told them not to go to the attic, and Billy weakly retorts that someone had to get the money. He gravely announces that their father is alive, that he's been eating doves, rats, and raccoons, and that he's found a way to store rainwater. As Billy goes on, Jack suddenly collapses and convulses on the ground. Crying is all Sam can do, while Jane tries to pull Jack together. Left with no other choice, she grimly says that they have to tell Allie so they can save Jack. That night, Allie receives a Morse code message, telling her to go to the Skull's Eye tomorrow. But when Allie arrives, there's no one there. Instead, she finds the Marrowbone storybook. She sits upon the rock formation, and she smiles as she reads through the story. Meanwhile, Ted lets himself inside the Marrowbone estate, only to find no one there. Allie eventually gets to the page detailing the arrival of their father. Jack wrote that the day they locked them up was just like any other day. He hurriedly took his siblings to the attic and locked them there to keep them safe. Once he's face to face with his father from a distance, he raised the money box. Jack demanded him to step away from the house in exchange for the money, and his father complied, leaving his rifle beside a tree and walking away. Jack traded his fear for determination as he approached his father, who's sitting in the secluded cavern in the beach. The man maintained an eerie silence, but after he received the money, he quickly attacked Jack, grabbed his head and mouth, and tried to snap his own son's neck. But Jack managed to stab Fairbairn's throat, making him back off. He weakly escaped from the cavern, only to find his father waiting for him on the grassy ledge. Fairbairn grabbed his neck, then shoved him off the ledge. In the attic, the three siblings were anxiously waiting for their brother's return when they heard heavy footsteps approaching. Billy grabbed the weapon, and suddenly, Fairbairn dropped down from the chimney before lunging towards his children. Eventually, Jack regained his consciousness, and he grabbed Fairbairn's shotgun as he rushed to the house. In the present, Ted grabs a sledgehammer while he ascends the stairs leading to the attic. With that, he starts breaking the door down. Returning to that fateful day, Jack hurried to the attic, yelling to his siblings that he's coming. He called out to them, but no one was responding. Instead, he heard his father's words, Open the door, Jack. When Ted finally opens the door, the abhorrent stench makes him wretch. He notices something being covered by a blanket, and when Ted removes it, he finds the dead bodies of the Marabone children. With Fairbairn daring him to open the door, the hurt and bloody Jack broke down. Sobbing and asking what he had done, Jack was too late. He wrote in the storybook and Allie weeps as he reads this. Jack was all alone outside the fort as he laid out three dolls on the floor. He tearfully apologized for not keeping them safe, but he swore that he was keeping his promise. Jack loaded the rifle and slid it inside his mouth. But before he could pull the trigger, he heard his mother's lullaby playing. He crawled inside the fort, and there he saw Billy, Sam, and Jane asleep together. With his siblings in tow, Jack climbed down the stairs and shattered the mirror there. He then held his hand out for his siblings to repeat their oath, but the mirror reflected Jack all by himself. Allie continues to read, and the story says that their father banged on the door for hours, but there was no way for him to escape. Jack bricked up the door, Billy closed the chimney, and they waited for days until the noises stopped. Horrified, Allie started running to the estate as fast as she could. She calls out to Jack, then sees Tom's bag on the table. While Allie is looking around their home, she finds the room with the fort, and from there, she hears the siblings' voices. But as she crawls inside, it's revealed that it's just Jack, impersonating all of his siblings and having a conversation with himself. Impersonating Billy, Jack says that they only came back because he tried to kill himself, and using Jane's voice, he turns to Allie, pleading her to take care of him. Crying, Allie gently cups Jack's face, bringing him back to reality. Try as she may to reach out to him, Jack only drives her away, despairing over how his siblings will go away if she stays. Heartbroken, Allie exits the room, but she starts hearing noises coming from the attic. She quickly goes to check on Tom, and she blanches upon seeing him, slowly dying from his deeply slit throat. The door suddenly closes, but the rattled girl doesn't see anyone there. In the fort, Jack could hear Allie yelling that she's not afraid, that she's not alone. She continues provoking Fairbairn until he finally reveals himself in all his emaciated glory. 
The two of them engage in a struggle, but right as he's choking her, Jack bursts through the door with a shotgun. Finally, he shoots his father, killing him once and for all. Surrounded by death, Jack and Allie tenderly hold each other. Time passes and Allie is talking to Jack's doctor, who's commending him for his improvement. Still, he warns Allie that she may be wasting her life with Jack, as he believes that love cannot grow in an ill mind, and she will never have a proper family with him. Allie thanks him for his concern, but she still goes home to Jack in the Maribone estate, which has now been fixed up to be a warm place where they can make new memories in. To celebrate his birthday, she gives him a gift and it's the photograph that she took of him, Jane, Billy, and Sam when they first met. As Jack's gaze drifts towards the fields, Allie smiles and says that she'll wait inside until they come back. When she goes, Jack could see his siblings in the distance, and he looks back down at the photograph with a bright smile. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.